Yeah, well, I couldn't find that comment I was going to talk about last time about your driving, but somebody was saying that uh, Tammy's a girl with with business to do and she just gets a move on, just like me. So <laughs> it's like you need to sit. You just need to sit in this seat here, right here. I, I'm closer to the accident than you are. Now, in oh, Tammy's now you've survived this long with me driving. In Tammy's defense, when's the last time you had an accident? Yeah, when you were first driving, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. forty-five years ago. Yeah. So she's got a pretty good track record. I'll give her that. Well, how many points do you have in your license? I don't know. Well, hopefully none. Best I know of. Now she has, she has been stopped by the police a few times, but she's very good at talking her way out of it. So every time that she's been stopped, she's succeeded in smiling at them sweetly. And this is the thing you do, by the way. You get stopped by the police. You don't argue, right? You, time to argue is in court, not when you're with a policeman. <laughs> Try and talk your way out of it. My, my always my policy is to say, I'm not sure what I did wrong, but I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'm over full, and, and just kind of be pleading it's that way. It seems to work. Well, it's always worked for me too. But I got stopped two times in the same day one time. Got away with it. God knows why it didn't come up on their screen. Anyway, enough of that. Um, oh, so puppy Duke. Do claw removal. I showed how to do it. Somebody said why, and so, and so the answer to the why is for two reasons. First off, is we don't like do claws on dogs because they can get them hung up and get them caught in furniture or on fences and other things like that. And, and it's, it's very, a bone by then. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's calcified and it's very painful for them when that happens. Even as a puppy, it's not a bone. It's it's. It's not calcified. Yeah, it, it's yes. literally, literally, you know, you think that it's a horrific thing to do, it's not. It just, it's literally a split second, and typically the puppies don't even make a noise. If they the only do. The they make a noise is because you're holding them down and they don't want to be Yeah, held yeah, down. that's exactly right. They're squirming away. So the other reason we do it is so we send it off for, for DNA. It's a great source of DNA to, to uh, find out what your DNA is on your dog. If you're going to do that, you've got to do it. Three, three days to maybe seven at max. We do it between three and five days old. Especially smaller puppies, we'll wait till five days. Bigger, 10 ounce puppies, we might do it for three days. Okay. Um, Flags blowing the completely opposite way. It's, been it's from the north, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's, co it's cooler today yeah. for that reason. Oh, skill bigger. What stud would you use for a blue brindle female? Blue brindle female? Yep, what would you use, Tammy? A stud that does not have brindle. And that would be what color? Depends on what he wants to get out of that litter. What would be the very least you'd breed it to? A fawn. A blue. I mean, I'd get blues out of it. And then, like Tammy says, if you want to get other things like merle and other colors that can show up in the puppies, like cream, cocoa. 10 points, then you could get that the dog too. But basically, for, for me, it would be a blue, non-brindle dog. As a I wouldn't one. do the 10 points because if it's got brindle, it's going to run ugly, veiny looking stripes if it's okay. little 10 points. All right. Good. So I wouldn't do that. James Lewis says that we, we two are absolute legends. <laughs> do you feel like a legend? No, I don't. You have to be old to be a legend, don't James you? is a legend. Don't you have to be old to be a legend? He's old. Yeah. See all that gray. It's got so much it's knowledge. gray. It's not gray. It's white. He said that I had a hair. I mean, it's it's not too bad for somebody who's 97, for somebody who's 97 years old. Jack boy or Jacques boy. Hey, my female has been up and down between PG levels of six and nine for the past few days, and she's on day ten. Do I just keep retesting every day until I get over a thirteen? Uh, yes, you do, because you can creep up on you in a hurry, and um, I would, and basically I want to see it at a 15 to do my, to do a single AI, or maybe a 13 and then do one two days later, and then test when you've got the last one done, do another PG test to make sure the numbers are above a 20, that you know she didn't take a dive down the whole wrong direction. Didn't used to do that, but I do these days. Right. Uh, Rocio Martinez. I got my female puppy a few weeks back and I wanted to have help understanding her genetics. The breeder bought her from said she's a cream and the genetics says she's biggie literally. She's not a cream. So there you go. She's a fawn and the problem with creams and fawns is they can go together in their colors 
a cream dog could be almost completely white and it can be apricot and a, and a fawn dog can be very light color all the way through dark red so the two interleave and if you haven't done a DNA test you wouldn't know and so the answer is a big E little E dog is a dog that carries a copy of cream it's not cream KYKY no brindle um, AYAT that means that dog can produce 10 points but it's probably going to be a sable big D little D carries a copy of blue NCO carries a copy of Coco. Big B, Big B doesn't carry doesn't carry uh, uh, testable chocolate. Big S, Big S doesn't carry pied. Um, I assume that she's a form. Well, I'd call her a sable. Her, her, she's, she's okay. Maybe she's a Euro hero because you're talking about she might be a Euro hero. I have to see a picture of the dog. So uh, see if somebody made some replies on this. Yeah, so the SS, that's a bit confusing, and somebody may have got this right and I may have got it wrong. You know, there's different ways of reporting the gene. I like to see it as SN for no pied, SS for pied, and NN for no pied at all. NS being a pied carrier, so maybe this is a pied dog. You'll know, you didn't say she's a pied. So, you know, typically when you say capital S's, it means they don't have the gene. But I mean, it can get confusing on how they do that. As somebody else says here, yes, they talk about it. Some companies use S for no pied and SP for pied, exactly. So, so that's the problem is, is that you've got to see how they're reporting the pied to know whether or not this is actually a pied gene or not. Rachel Sargent. Last year I used a target test. It was my first Frenchie litter. First time doing a progesterone test and I got a successful litter. I think you used one of my dogs, in fact, Rachel. When timing a C-section, I did a more accurate test. Good point. The target test is not very good for timing C-sections. I would not rely on it at all for C-sections because it goes blue and you can't tell the various different shades of blue between that level of one and three. I would not use the target test to try to do a, a C-section. You make some mistakes. And something else I ran into today with a customer uh, was a person who was using, uh, trying to time a dog to do a C-set, to do a breeding with us, and it kept coming back blue on the test. And I said to her, what's the expiration date on your test kit? She said, I think I bought it in 2019. There's your problem. They are good for about nine months. They say a year, but in my experience, nine months is about it. And the problem is after that, they'll just come back blue and you think the dog's not ready. And in fact, the test is completely worthless. So watch out for the expiration date on these target tests, that's very important. I think I've talked about that before. So don't use for C-sections, do use them for timing to timing uh, breeding, uh, but make sure that they're not more than nine months old. Uh, oh, somebody said, we took the dog to, we took uh, um, Romeo to uh, the airport. And we had the, 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 the folks who, uh, yeah pick the dog up so someone said oh it's a really nice ending and I talked to them today by the way and Romeo's doing fantastic yeah, yeah. their kids are so yeah. in love with that little dog yeah there was somebody that was scolding me for driving with a puppy in my arms yeah I tell you what he was my baby I know and so and you know Tammy so, had tears in her eyes yes yeah, so, so you know I was holding him because I knew he was going to be leaving me forever I love him so yeah and they love him so too so that's mm -hmm. uh, right so don't accuse me of bad things when I'm doing my love and affection for my baby. Uh, so I've got one here. So someone's talking about um, Uh, Molly McHugh says it's not one strand of a double helix. I did a long video, did a long time about DNA, and I talked about the double helix. And I said you get one strand from one parent, one from the other. And they said no, each parent is one copy of each chromosome. I don't know that's right. I have to go do some research on this because my interpretation was actually it splits down the middle and you get one helix, one side from one, and one, you get the whole entire helix from one parent, one from the other. And of course, each sperm has slightly different make makeup, and that's why it works. But I may be wrong about that. So I'm going to come back to you on that and tell you whether I'm full of crap or whether I got that right. This got to be the last one. 
Susan Brocksmith, question. With your heated whelping kit, how do you put something over the heat that won't get the warmth correct? You don't want to have something really thick in there. So, you know, you can take a, if you're going to take a towel or something, they'll, they'll find the way around the towel and move the towel out of the way. We use pee pads for the first few days. But you can't have something thick in there because it will stop the heat from coming up. So that's exactly right. And I think we are now at the house, so we're going to have to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.